I'm Allie and welcome to When the Snow Falls, a web show where different speakers tell their own personal stories involving mental illness. Today's story comes to us from Casey Dean and some possible triggers in his story include suicide, depression, anxiety, and social anxiety. But as always, we ask you to be mindful of any personal triggers that you may have while viewing this story or any other in the future. Once you're done, we encourage you to submit any questions that you may have for Casey through our blog at snowfallstogether.tumblr.com. And there's also more information on that site about exactly how to submit questions and when and where they'll be answered and all that good stuff. So without further ado, thank you so much for watching and helping to fight against the stigmatization of mental illness. And here's Casey Dean. Hi, my name is Casey Dean and I am a psychology student here at Ithaca College. I also minor in sociology and I have been living with social anxiety and depression since as long as I can remember. When I was five years old, I remember a hair cutter would always come to my house um, almost every Sunday. Uh, I have an Italian family and we always have pasta on Sunday when uh, I was younger. And he would cut everyone in the family's hair. And I used to be so afraid of him. And I didn't know why, because he was a nice man. But I would hide under the couch and my family would always try to pull me out, get me out, but I would scream and I would kick and I would cry and I just would not want to be seen by this man. And getting my hair cut by him was such a scary experience. I would shake, I would tremble. And I didn't know why, because I didn't know what anxiety was when I was five years old. Who does? It's uh, a difficult topic to tackle when you're so young. And as I got older, um, things did not seem to get worse. Um, through elementary school, it was amazing. I had a great group of friends, and I thought that something like that would never happen again. Um, and that all changed when I moved from Brooklyn, New York, to Staten Island, New York, in the fourth grade. I uh, had absolutely no friends. Um, I was alone in my room for about two months uh, before I started school, doing absolutely nothing. Um, and I was about, uh, I think, eight or nine, fourth grade age. Um, and every single day in class, from the first day of class until maybe three months, in the middle of class, I would start to cry. And I'd have to raise my hand and I would have to say, Miss, I need to see you outside. This happened every day for three months. I would go outside with her and I would just cry. I would put my head down and I would cry. And I never knew why I was crying, but I was. And nobody ever really seemed to care. My teacher got really tired of it after a week. She even said to me once, when is this going to stop? I was never referred to a psychologist. I never told my parents. My parents were never told. Then as I got a little older, um, fifth grade seemed to get a little bit better um, because I was getting adjusted to my new environment. But when, with my social anxiety, it was difficult um, to get adjusted because I just didn't really know how to talk to people and how to make new friends. Because the friends that I had back home, where I considered home in Brooklyn, they were, they were my rock, they were my support, and not having them really did hurt. But in fifth grade, I did make some new friends, and that carried along into middle school. Um, however, in middle school, everybody developed new friends, and they left me. And I quickly learned that it's very easy to leave me, and that's what I thought. And I know now that's not true, but that's what I thought. In the seventh grade, I met my best friend, Sonia. Sonia changed my life forever. She has been my best friend ever since. She brought me out of my comfort zone. And the way that we met was so incredibly simple. We were playing this game called Quarters. I don't know if you know what that is, but it's where you flick quarters in the other person's hands, and if they catch them, then uh, it's their point. If they don't, then it's your point. And she was playing quarters with uh, a friend at a lunch table to the right of me. And her quarter flicked, went right to my forehead, and she started laughing at me. And I started laughing too, and we were laughing with each other. And I think that's one of the first times I've ever laughed with somebody since fifth grade. Uh, it's really hard to describe my relationship with Sonia because she is more than a best friend. She is a, a soul sister of mine. Um, we are bound by our souls, and I love her. I love her so much. And she brought me out of my social anxiety in such a great way. She would take me out to the mall and introduce me to new people, and she 
<laughs> she would always, always do this thing where she'd want to put me up in drag or female's clothing, for those who don't know. And we went to the mall once. We took public transportation in New York City to go to a mall. And I was dressed as Britney Spears, and I was 13 years old. <laughs> And I would have never done that if it wasn't for her. I was singing Toxic on the bus. Um, you know that song? With the taste of your lips, I'm not a ride. We all know that song. Um, or you should. Um, so, after that, it was so easy to meet new people. And I didn't really feel sad much anymore. Then I got to high school. And that's where things started to spiral downward. In the 9th, 10th, and 11th grades, Sonia did not go to my school. She went to another school um, a borough away, um, and I didn't see her often. I saw her maybe twice, three times every three months, and that was scary for me because I didn't know who was going to be there for me. And I did meet new friends in high school, but they weren't friends. I was just nice to them because they were nice to me. And that's when I realized that's not what a friend is. A friend is someone who's there to listen to you and to care about you. And even if you don't need advice from them, just for them to listen. And she was that person. So when I was in the 11th grade and when I was a senior, I remember I would walk through the hallways with my head down, headphones in, even though that was completely banned. I got detentions more times than I can count. But I did it anyway because I did not want to be spoken to. I didn't want to be seen. I sat in class and I was quiet. I hardly ever said a word. Um, during class, I would put my head down and I just wanted to disappear. I'm not sure my depression really started to kick in. Um, when I was a senior in high school, I sought out a, psych uh, a psychologist and we really didn't click. Um, she took a very different approach to um, the way I thought the meeting was going to be. She asked me all about my family and she asked me about my childhood and things that I wasn't ready to talk about yet. Um, and I kind of just felt violated, so I didn't go back to her. And I'm not saying that um, psychologists and therapists aren't good for everybody because, um, as I'll explain later, they were very good for me. Um, but that particular psychologist was not uh, good for me. Uh, and I encourage you to um, seek help if you need it because everybody's experience is different. So um, then I came to college and right before I thought everything's gonna be great. This is a new beginning. I'm gonna meet so many new people. I'm not gonna close myself off anymore. I'm doing this to myself, you know, and I'm gonna get out of it. So it's the first night of college and I'm in my single dorm room and I hear everybody outside, and they're all having fun, and they're laughing, because they're all happy to be freshmen and at school and in Ithaca, where it's great. And I sat under my bed, and I cried for three hours. And I was at one of my lowest lows. And it's, it's hard to think about, because I try not to think about it too much. Um, but as, as time went on, I realized that um, Ithaca College has um, a Center for Psychological Services called CAPS, and I figured, hey, why not give this a shot? So I went to CAPS and I saw a therapist, and she really, really did change my life. She taught me the art of medication, uh, meditation, sorry, um, and she taught me how to be mindful and how to love and be kind and um, love yourself and love others at the same time, appreciate the beauty in the world and appreciate the fact that other people exist and they're in your life for a reason. And don't take them for granted and don't push them away. Bring them in, let them know that you love them. That all sounds peachy. However, over the summer, in May 2013, I had a suicide attempt. I was at home, it was right after finals uh, week, and I was going to be home for about three months and I had no friends from back home. Uh, Sonia completely uh, left New York to go do her own thing, and I did not have any friends from high school, so I figured, what's the point of living a life that, I, that I'm not connecting with people with? I don't want to live alone. So I was so incredibly lucky. Um, I don't know if I was blessed or if I just had the cognition in order to do it, but I called 911 on myself at 3.41 in the morning. And the ambulance came, and I went to the ER, and 
after that I was sent to um, the uh, institution for um, psychiatric patients in the same hospital. And I was there for three days. And as I looked around, I realized that I am sad, yes. I do live with depression and I do live with anxiety. But there are also people that are in here that feel so... There's people in here that don't deserve to be here. This is their last option because they didn't get the help that they needed, because they felt so stigmatized. Even if they didn't know that they were, they felt stigmatized due to the stigma surrounding mental illness and getting help. And I quickly became more of a nurse than a patient. And I would go around and I would talk to the people on my floor and I would see how they were and I would check in. And that was hard for me as someone um, with social anxiety, but I did it. And that was one of my first steps to recovery. Um, then I met with a psychiatrist who was very, very lovely, and we clicked from the get-go. And she put me on two medications that um, have been working uh, very well for me. Um, they helped me with my depression and my anxiety. Um, I do want you guys to know, though, that um, medications are not always the right uh, choice for many people. So always consult um, a doctor or a psychologist, psychiatrist um, before you, um, you know, uh, make any moves regarding your mental health or your physical health for that matter because mental health and physical health are not that different. Um, so after that, things started to get a little bit better. I am not going to say that everything's peachy now because sometimes I'll wake up and I'll walk to class and I'll put my headphones in put my hat on and make sure nobody looks at me because I don't want to be seen. But those days are getting so much fewer and farther between, and I am so grateful for that. I'm so grateful that I was able to tell my parents that I've been feeling this way and have them not dismiss it as, oh, you're just sad about something. Why won't you just go outside and play with your friends when I was in the fourth grade? What friends? I'm so grateful that now I have a support system, and that support system is the friends that I made at college. They are my close friends and I have told them about my attempt and when I tell them they cry more than I do and they always tell me that Casey your life is so valuable and I would not be the person I am today if it wasn't for you and I'm very happy that you're still here with me and I'm incredibly happy that I'm still here too because every day is a new experience. So to end this all off I really just must say that this is my story regarding social anxiety and depression and I don't know the ins and outs of everything. Um, nobody really does. Um, but I have to say that I am on the road to recovery. Things are getting so much better. And when it seems like you can't go any farther, when it seems like you're walking through hell, keep going. Because I walked through hell and my feet didn't get burned in the process. Thank you.